Hello, and welcome to the Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. If you've got a gaming or game night question, be sure to send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. For answers to those questions, you can check out our website at tabletopbellhop.com or our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Now, the question we are answering tonight is what's in the box? I am going to take a look at Tyrants of the Underdark, a deck building game featuring the drow of Dungeons and Dragons. Power struggles in the Underdark. I have heard fantastic things about this game, but I have not played it myself. I've never actually seen the game. I've got to admit, when I first saw it at Origins, I think back in 2015, I got to admit it didn't look like much. And it still kind of doesn't. But I've heard so many positive reviews since then, I've really wanted to check it out. So first off, big thanks to Gale Force 9 for providing me a review copy of the game. No other compensation was received. So, here we have Tyrants of the Underdark in a rather annoying sized box that's probably not going to fit well on my shelf. But it's got some really pretty art on it. Um, Seize the Underdark. Take your place as a villainous leader of a drow house and fight for control of the Underdark. Build your deck throughout the game to recruit drow, dragons, cultists, and demon minions, and use them to assassinate enemy troops or infiltrate and control your opponent's strongholds. Choose your strategy carefully, though, for only one house can rule the Underdark. Uh, it has a rule book, a pad of scorecards, that's a good or bad sign, four drow house play mats, 220 plastic pieces, 260 minion cards, 80 or 68 die cut pieces. Game time one plus hour. Uh, that's a little vague. Thanks. Two to four players, edges 14 plus. Again, this is from Gale Force 9, even though I don't see a Gale Force 9 logo anywhere on the back here. Also from Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. We're going to take a look. I have not seen what's in this box except for pictures online and one time in a glass case at Origin. So I don't quite know what we're getting into here. Right away, I'm kind of impressed by the insert. So the instructions are just floating on top here. They're going to fall if I let them go. So we're going to put those down for now, and we'll get back to those, and we're going to take a look at what else we got here. So there's an insert here. It's got a spot for the cards that actually looks deep enough to hold the cards. So Gale Force 9 is doing a little better job than Cool Mini or not there. We got a whole bunch of components over here. We're going to take a look at those. We got some boards over here. So we're going to start off with the punch board. So we have a punch board with just a bunch of chits. Um, I have no, wow, okay, I'm not even going to try to pronounce any of this, but there are a bunch of drow host names. The only one I know how to pronounce is Menzobranzan, or Menzoberanzan, if you prefer pronouncing it drow, or dro. Uh, and there's a whole bunch more that I'm not even going to try, and then a bunch of, looks like, victory point tokens and a first player token. I guess if a thematic first player token would have been a little cooler for a D&D &D base game, like, I don't know, a spider web or a spider, because it's drow. But fair enough. And then we have a board. We're gonna unfold this as best I can on the stream. And this is part of what just, it's not a very engaging looking board. It's just a bunch of lines and circles and like just a shady kind of background. Again, for D&D, &D, I just I expect something more thematic. But again, I have heard this is a fantastic game, which is why I decided to try to give this a shot. So here is the board for Tyrants in the Dark. It is one-sided, nothing on this side. Now we are going to get into, now this, is a nice looking board. That's better. Look, we actually have drow on it as opposed to just like a bunch of circles and lines. I don't know if this is an individual player board. No, this isn't an individual. So this must be some kind of market board. Knowing it's a deck builder, this is probably where your market goes. Yeah, it even says market card. Wow. And market deck and devoured cards and victory point tokens, insane outcasts, priestesses of Loth and host guards. I'm gonna guess, having played many deck building games, these are gonna be your standard cards everyone can buy. Then we have some nice little color-coded circular layer type things. I'm guessing in the four different player colors. We do have a score sheet, as promised. What are we scoring? This is always interesting. We are going to score the victory points of each site you control, two points for each site under your total control, so we have some area control going on, one victory point for each troop in your trophy hall. I'm going to guess those are people you've killed. Deck victory point value of each card in your deck, hand, and discard. Standard for most victory point or deck building games. Inner circle victory point value of each of your inner circle. I have no clue. And victory point tokens. 
that's quite a few things to score for a deck builder. All right, then we have, here we have the actual house boards, nice and thick. I mainly note that because the last game I unboxed came with paper thin player boards. Nice thick player boards for the different Benere, uh, probably murdering these. Barrison Delamargo, I guess Drow are somewhat Spanish or French. Mizrim. And Zorlaren. You realize in the D&D world, the letters X and Z are actually more common than R, T, S, N, O, N, and E. Uh, we have a bunch of cards, obviously. This is a deck building game. So I'm just going to make a stack here because I want to see how many cards we got. All right, that is a significant stack of cards. Cool. What I like is there's spots that are deep enough to hold all of these. I don't know what the different decks are. I'm going to open up one of them, and we'll see, depending on what's in there, if I'll open up the rest for this unboxing video or not. For those of you watching live, if you want to see all of them, let me know and I'll open them all. But I'm thinking that it's not going to be required. So I have a ghoul card in front of me. It says Malice. It says four undead. And then it has some special rules at the bottom. Um, then it has two four. And then it shows its card number from set. It shows a set number and card number one of 40. So just in case. So this is one of 40. Literally one of 40. Just in case I'm not supposed to shuffle this. I don't want to mix it up. I'll try to get the camera to focus on this ghoul. It's a D&D game. I expected good art. It's as I expected. There's a Merolith which is a snake woman with multiple arms. Come on, camera focus. That would be awesome if you'd focus on the rules so you can see the rules at the bottom of the card. Of course not. Text is very small on these cards. Like I literally, I have to hold it about here or I have to take my glasses off. It says choose one, place a spy or return one of your spy and draw two cards. This is the night hag singing a merry song. She sows the seeds of madness. So there's flavor text. That's nice. So level three fiend, she has guile, and I have no idea what the cards at the bottom, what the two symbols at the bottom mean. Dig the art. Good looking art. You can't even see the text there, unfortunately. That kind of shows how small it is. We got a Myconid. I love Myconids. Mushroom people. Obviously, I know Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a D&D fan. I dig it. Cards are pretty. Since that was numbered, I'm going to grab this one and take a look. This also says 1 to 40. Oh, but it has a different symbol in the corner. So that was 1 to 40 with one set of symbols. You know what? I'm not going to open these. So we have four different decks that each say 1 to 40 with a different symbol on the bottom. Again, I haven't played the game, so I don't know what that means. It may be for the different players. Maybe each player has their own deck that they deck build from. These all say minion on the back of them. I probably should have showed you that. So these are four different minion decks. Um, each has a little faction symbol on the bottom. We're going to keep the other one sealed for now. Now, this one says core in the bottom. So we're going to open up the core deck. I'm going to guess these are the cards that everyone can always buy. I don't know that for sure, having not played before. We have a lot of D&D &D fans, it seems. There is no, um, what I like to call the cigarette pack style for opening these. So you are going to want like a hobby knife or something to open them. If you do ever pick this game up. So yeah, core cards. I'm expecting to find a bunch of Priests of Loth here. And that's exactly what I have. So this is going to be the cards that everyone can buy. Um, this one gives plus two spiders. And then there's a, a some text. Again, the art is really nice. I didn't expect anything different from a D&D &D based game. Uh, the House Guards. Some more badass looking to brow. And nobles. House guards. They instead give shields and swords instead of spiders. And then the noble gives spiders. There's a lot of nobles. Wow. And then we have starters. So, of course, it's a deck builder. So you're going to have your starter hands. So your starter hands are going to be soldiers, which develop shields. Then you have a core, which is the insane outcast. There's an awful lot of those. That's weird. So the only core cards are soldiers. I don't know if your entire deck is soldiers at the beginning of the game. The insane outcast looks rather insane. So those are all the cards you get. Again, there's a spot for all of these. They fit pretty good. Then we have minis. No cubes. 
little minis of cloaked, sneaky looking drow people. You know what? That color is probably not the best. Of course, you're not going to be able to see any details. Oh, maybe you will. Look at that. So cloaked, sneaky, drow looking mini here. A little baggie full of those. Then we have, looks like shield. My eyes are not, yep, so shield. So shields. Yeah, good luck. Although we had it for a second. Thank you, camera, but you lost it. It likes to focus on eyes. There, you can see the shield for a second. Bag full of sh gray shields. And then shields in the other player colors. Red, blue, orange shields, and white shields. These white ones probably be able to hold up. They are all unique looking. Wheat shield is different. White, focus on that. You can see the cross swords there. Shield. That's it. So that's everything I see in this box. We got some drow runes on the side. So again, we have white shields, blue shields, orange shields, red shields, and gray shields. And then miniatures in blue, orange, red, and gray. So I don't know what the white is, because white is obviously not a player color. We have a bunch of player boards. And worth noting, there is somewhere to put all of these, right? Like the player boards are going to fit nice right there. I dig it. Not the best box insert I've ever seen, but it works. Um, these, once they punch, will go somewhere. But there is, again, a spot specific for this board. Yep, that's going to nest nice right there. Nice, nice, right on top. Place for everything, everything in its place. I always dig that. I'm gonna put the rule back back in. Our card's gonna go over here. The punch board's gonna go on top. And then we just have the rules to take a quick look at. So large rule book um, for size. 22 pages, including the quick reference on the back. Dark text on light background, I dig it. Font's a little small, but not too tiny. You kind of see that there. It's not horrible. I would like it slightly bigger. Um, so unaligned troops are the white tokens. And then there's player troops, there's spies, inner circle boards, a first player board. Not a lot of components, but it's a deck builder, right? Makes sense. Setup looks pretty simple. And a four player setup. Text looks good. Um, there's some special rules in gray. The following market half decks are included. So there are four decks included. I don't know which ones you use, but it notes that there are only four. I don't think they ever put out an expansion for this. So it's obviously designed to have more cards. Very typical D&D style artwork inside. Tells you the different parts of a card. I'm not going to go through that right now. There's different resources. So swords and shields are powers, and the spider webs are influence. So you have two different resources in this game. Um, there's a sequence of play. Actually, there is a lot of white space, actually. This is laid out fairly nice. That's going to be a quick read, actually. I like uh, white space is a good thing with layout. It's all single column. No, and then it goes double column. So it's, it's a mix. So we go double column here. Lots of examples. Lots of artwork. Looks pretty good. I'm going to flip ahead here to see if there's anything really interesting to stick out. Of course, it's D&D based, so a whole ton of fluff about the different houses. So I do have a correction from the chat room. There was additional decks, Aberrations and Undead, put out. So actually, the rules are not that thick because it's a D&D based game. We were looking at 14 pages because otherwise there is a description of every site on that game board and what it means in the D&D world. Fair enough, I expect that from a Dungeons & Dragons themed game. So there we have it. That is D&D &D Tyrants of the Underdark, a deck builder. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Tyrants of the Underdark, a deck builder, Dungeons & Dragons game from Gale Force 9. Uh, I think it came out 2015, so this is not new hotness, but it's new to me. I am really looking forward to this. I gotta admit, it didn't look like much, but player people are digging this game. Everyone I talk to about it really likes this game. I'm um, hoping Sean can cut out the box fart sound. I apologize for making that. It's the first one that's happened all night. Uh, so that was 
Tyrants of the Underdark from Gale Force 9, a Dungeons & Dragons deck building game. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Be sure to head over to tabletopbellhop.com and check out other cool gaming content. If you dig this video, make sure you hit subscribe or follow, depending on where you happen to be watching it. And if you're so inclined, head over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping the bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.